represented Amsterdam Whitney Gallery in Chelsea, international artists, and our art features figurative, landscape, surrealism, abstract, sculptures, and we uh, offer all points of call of the different art of international and global artists. All the way from Garrettsville, here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery, Philip Catania. Philip, welcome. You. And you know, I see all this abstract, wonderful work behind me. Would you tell our audience a little bit about this, this display? Well, this is my year's uh, work uh, from, I guess, left to right. The first one is called Crossroads. The second one is called Inca Gourd. The third one is Lady Cadaver. And the fourth one is Repose. Well, the last one is called Nymphalidae. Nymphalidae. Well, tell me a little bit about the concept. Let's take this first one over here to our left. Uh, what, what was uh, your inspiration or reason for, for painting? painting it? They kind of create themselves. I, uh, I start painting and uh, it takes me in a certain direction and I just resolve it. And that one came into a very sort of a landscape of crossroads which uh, I think came out quite successful. The second one uh, was a face that I worked with and it turned into a plant. <laughs> How did the face turn into a plant? Just happened, huh? Yeah, it just sort of uh, develops. They all develop. They all go, one line leads into another line. And, and the painting takes me on a trip as well as I'm viewing it and creating it at the same time and it's directing me at the same time. And they're all similar. Everyone is... Uh, a culmination of lines and ideas and interactions between the painting and myself. And how long does it take to to finish uh, one of these paintings? It depends. Uh, it takes a while because they need a lot of interaction and a lot of perspective back and forth and introspection back and forth. Could take a month. It could take two months. You know. I work sometimes on two at the same time, but mostly I, I work until one is resolved and then I go to the other one. They come in layers. You know, they, it takes a while to develop it. Um, the concept kind of develops itself also. Um, I used to paint from drawings, but now I just directly paint to the canvas. And the canvas and the painting in this the form directs me to its conclusion. It's a, it's a conversation, a visual conversation. Each one is a visual conversation. And each side pulls different parts to itself until it comes to its conclusion, and I'm happy with. This is all the same, it's just the visualizations are different. Um, that, the first one there, the, uh, the good times, was. I don't know, it was a very whimsical kind of thing with animals and circuses, and I just sort of enjoyed, enjoyed that. It's very different from my normal style, but uh, you know, that's where the painting went, and that's where I took it. Or it took me. Uh, the Mirage, the one next to it, that was, that was just strange. It just developed strangely. Uh, that's it. Oh, then there's Farmhand. I live on a farm. And a lot of the uh, images come in my paintings, and uh, it kind of evolved. I started with a cow's head, you know, a Hereford cow that we have on a farm, and uh, and then the hand popped up, and then all of a sudden I realized, you know, I had farm hand, <laughs> literally, and uh, it kind of even named itself. And then the, the next one is uh, sort of. Uh, Water birds, waterfowl. Similar, it was started abstractly and then it started to take on forms of uh, waterfowl. So I worked with that and uh, that came out quite nice. And the last one, it's figures, three figures uh, reposed together. 
And uh, there's a little dog figure on the bottom. And it all works well together. It, uh, it's one of my, I think, one of my most successful of, of the group. But they're all successful, so I mean, it's the one I like a lot. But I like them all, so. What we want to say is welcome to Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Thank so you So glad to, to see you back. And we also see uh, some family members here. So let's go over and, and, and say hello to them. And Philip also has his wonderful wife here, Karen. Karen, say a little bit of uh, words about Philip and, and his work. I think, of course, it's gorgeous, and <laughs> I'm married to him, and I love him. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's true. And it's true, you know. Through the years, you've always admired his work, and, and you said that he has brought a lot of, um, you know, creation and traveling and different things due to his artwork. True, very true, yes. Yes. Well, it's good to see you, and he has some other... Uh... This is Georgette. Georgette and Sal. Say cousins. <laughs> We're the very loving cousins. We love his work. It's amazing. It's great to see him here whenever he's here. We'd love to catch up and look at the new works. Yeah, we try. <laughs> I mean, just seeing his work, it just seems like it keeps getting better and better every time, which is pretty amazing. I don't know how he does it. And there's nothing better than, than a loving, adoring family and friends. <laughs> nothing in this world. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, thank you. We're here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery in Chelsea. We have Ronnie Lynn Doplet. And Ronnie, where are you from? Uh, Jupiter, Florida. Can Congratulations Thank for being up here. And you Thank have you. all this wonderful artwork behind me, very colorful. Could you tell us, uh, tell our audience a, a little bit about your philosophy in, on painting? Um, oh, I really love um, painting bright colors. And um, I love family and friends and just life. And in my paintings, I like to see vibrant colors because uh, that's the way... I like to paint and um, my paintings are acrylic on canvas and I use a pouring medium so that when it dries it looks like it's wet and my inspiration is from nature and flowers and the sky and the grass and beautiful flowers in between and then that's how I create my paintings. In each creation, how, how do you um, come up with sort of a, a different topic maybe or a, a different image? It depends what I see during that day. Um, if I see um, a hot pink flower with lavender uh, and then the blue sky and the grass, then I'll mix my paints and that'll be my creation that day. So, but as I said, I love bright, bold colors. And, it's happy. Uh, it's yes, nice I'd and I like happy. to do happy paintings, and and, uh, and I just enjoy doing it, and I love to see how they come out. And how many um, paintings are here tonight? There are eight paintings. Painting? Yes. Okay. Now you were saying the two on the end. Now talk talk about those. They're called the Starburst series, Floral One and Floral Two, and I call them floral because they actually look like they are coming out from you know flower, and the ones in the middle are just the Starburst series with just different vibrant, bold colors that I enjoy painting with. Hi, we have a special occasion. Um, my parents, Marilyn and Stanley Katz, have just arrived to the Amsterdam Whitney Gallery to see my exhibition and the other artists' exhibition. I'm so happy and thrilled that they are here. And um, wearing her, this is a hat, her art, made of one of my abstract paintings, and uh, my dad's an artist too, and we paint together um, once a week, and we've been doing it for about 18 years. And um, my mom is very talented in Not an artist. her things as well, <laughs> and I love them dearly. And uh, thank you, Crystal. And if you look here, it's one of her paintings, and it's a scarf. Oh, that's wonderful. So we have a hat and scarf combo here. <laughs> and, oh, and belts. <laughs> All the way from California. California, yeah. here in New yeah. York City, La Berge, yeah, Muren. Very, very, very close to uh, San Francisco. 
Well, you've come a long way. Welcome to Chelsea. Yeah, you are yeah. in the international art spot of the world. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. And we're also taking a vacation here and seeing the sights. Oh, see? Double. Double yeah, trouble here. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's now, great. Now, tell me now, you are watercolors. Watercolors, yeah. Transparent watercolors. And that's a diff there's a difference. And, and what's the difference? Well, the transparent watercolors are, are you lay down a layer let it dry and if it you don't if it's not right you can put another layer of something else and it will change the layer underneath it will shine through it so you can see the layer underneath so if i have green and i want it to look bluer i can put a thin layer of blue on the green and it will turn into a blue green <laughs> Whereas if you have opaque watercolors, it's very they're they're like tempera paints. They're opaque. And uh, tell me now, how many paintings uh, did you bring here? Six. Six. And tell me a little bit about them. Well, they're all uh, sceneries. I think are from around um, where I live in Davis. Uh, California, except for the one at the beach was, um, well, at the beach <laughs> in California. Um, they're all painted with uh, the transparent watercolor. It takes quite a bit of time to put all the layers on top. Sometimes one color will have uh, six or seven layers. Um, like this one over here has a a layer of blue toward, well, there's yellow, then there's um, green. Well, actually it's blue, and I start putting layering more blue on the bottom. You'll notice over there that the layer is darker blue. And I just do a little bit of blue at the top, and that gives the idea of the hill curving and the sun shining on the hill. So that's what layers can do. You can have a lot of control with watercolor if you can figure out colors. Colors are very, very important. You, you have to have the right colors against each other. And so you have to know your opposites of uh, complementary or opposite colors. So um, it's fun though, it's, it's uh, so fun to watch you know, you put down your basic pieces, shapes and everything, basic colors, and then you just, before your very eyes, you watch this painting develop, and all of a sudden, it's a beautiful painting, and it's just, I think it's magic every time. <laughs> it's sort and of I, like when I do my show, and yeah, it's sort of like you yeah. give birth to a new show. Yeah, that's right, and I've probably painted over a thousand paintings, so I, I still think it's magic. I still... Love it. Well, that's what's important. With this Kelly Stein all the way from California, and we have beautiful pastels and, and uh, acrylics. Tell us a little bit about your work. Uh, well, they're all different, whatever I'm feeling inside, and just sort of comes out at that moment and many moments after. And uh, yeah, just I'm uh, inspired by like. Mark Rothko in this one, and Rauschenberg in this one, and just all different artists that I'm learning and experimenting with and, and enjoying playing with. Yeah. And, and um, do you study or? Yeah, I'm, I'm studying in Brentwood, California, yeah. First that thing. one's called New Jack City, and I just love um, working with color, and there's um, different techniques in there, like pastels and crepe paper, and and then it just sort of evolves. It's literally, I don't know any artist, what's in your head and somehow it comes out on the canvas, yeah. This and one's I, titled Mother, um, and my mom passed away, and so, uh, so the titles usually come after the painting evolves, um, and it just, after it was complete, I just thought of my mother <laughs> when I painted it, <laughs> called Mother. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's Sunset Beach, and you can see that it's, um, a little Rothko-esque and living in California. I just, 
You see a little sunset coming in, a little pink sky. Um, yeah, so that's what evoked that. And this uh, piece is called Pink Lady. Um, there's a lot of pink in there and lots of different layers. And yeah, sometimes it takes um, many layers till you get what you want until you feel like it's complete. Yeah. And, and do you have a studio or do you uh, paint out of, out of uh, a I class? I paint um, in a friend's studio with her and also in the class in Brentwood. Yeah. Right now we have swimming. It looks like a lot of swimming here. And we have Lulu Zeng, who is originally from China, lives in Michigan, did you say? Welcome to New York City. You are at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery, which is the center of art in New York City, in the world. Welcome. Thank you. It's summertime, and you know, this is like my favorite sport water and swimming and tell me a little bit about uh, this viewing of, of paintings and collages and mixed media that you have here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a swimmer. I started swimming before I went to elementary school so I got a professional, professional training for a long time and since then I just love water. Whenever I got into water I got inspired so my topic is focused on the water. Well, that's the same, <laughs> same here. I love water. I swim every day. A matter oh, of fact, nice. yeah, I swam today. So I understand your focus. Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you. And now, uh, t tell me, uh, uh, let's differentiate the different paintings that we have. We have this one on the corner here. Now, tell me. Uh, What's that called? And yeah, this one I called the Young Dream because a uh, white swim. I, I'm always like uh, in my dream, and I look at uh, the view from uh, um, under the water. That's the view I can see. It's uh, the the water ca like a medium to distort the, the imaging. So it seems you can see the real imaging but it's not everyday people can see because there's a water in between that's way the next to it and the next this one yes yeah this is a group of um same um concept um uh, painting that's all uh the view from underwater to see the swimmer on the ground. The ground. Mm, yeah. You can see that, that like this one, people um, playing with water. So that's the view from underwater. Underwater. Yeah. Interesting concept. Now this one right here, is that you? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I usually um, paint um, based on the photo. So I have an underwater uh, camera. I t take a picture underwater and then um, I paint. Mm -hmm. yeah. Underwater. Now, right here. Yeah, that's my daughter. Uh, she's a swimmer too. And uh, I used to use oil like a, my medium. Now I try different kind. This two painting I um, use charcoal to draw first and then use um, acrylic and um, some other uh, paint uh, it can smear on the um, canvas. The canvas didn't uh, jessled so it can look like more like a water uh, effect. Mm -hmm. And then we have this far corner. That's very interesting. Ta talk about this one. Uh, I usually paint, I feel bored from 2D, so I want to uh, transfer from 2D to 3D. That's the first step. I use um, a different angle to see um, two view. So when you walk from left to right, you see one view. So from the other side, you see another view. So that's like one painting, two, uh, two images. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's why uh, I use mixed medium, uh, a lot of medium to show the uh, digital effect um, and also use the resin to give the water feeling. Uh, 
as one. Now uh, I'm, uh, I'm the student at Cranbrook Art Academy uh, in Michigan. Uh, I'm in metalsmithing department, so I do more work um, in metal. So that's the enameling, uh, the uh, patina on the copper, and also that one on the wall is uh, um, enamel. I paint from my birthright, from my sons, by my talent. I paint and I write, and I try to master it myself. And I paint with phosphorus. I use phosphorus. So I paint on oil on canvas, and I paint with like oil on line, almost on, li on line, lining, lean. And I paint with oils, and I paint with phosphorus. So my paintings, they're all shining like a spacecraft at night if you switch off the lights. So you are like, you are never alone. Like at night when you see the soul phosphorus, you see of the invisible forces of the nature, of invisible forces of sacred feminine and masculine principle, which is always together, you cannot separate it. You think of oh, beautiful dance of Venus with Mercury, with Regulus, and with the beauty of the human heart, who are now going through the, through the transformation of our thinking, of our consciousness. Because our consciousness is expanding and it's taking with, with it all the animal kingdom, all the biological kingdom, and of course the most important is the safety of planet Earth and all the species who represent here on planet Earth. Well, first off, now this in this corner you we have a you woman. Uh, uh, yes, the, uh, the goddess. Yes, this Tell was us about the goddess. Yes, this was inspired by the Greek culture because some part of my ancestry, of course, come from Greece, because they have a Greek, Greek feet, you know, and my second finger is like a little bit bigger, so it means Greek feet. So I'm inspired by, of course, by the, the rose of wind, so you see the little star, you see the leaf, you see the flower, and of course you see the beauty of the feminine, uh, of the feminine expression of uh, some purity, which, you know, like in the ancient time, it was lots of societies who worship the goddess. I, my, me personally, I don't worship anyone. I'm just master who working on myself, and I appreciate the works of every master, because this is the way to, uh, to help uh, humanity to evolve and to reunite with your real true origin. So the feminine principle is the goddess. So the goddess. this is the goddess. And then uh, what's next to the goddess? That looks and this I call Tezerus. Because our vocabulary is very important. And I am from Russia, but I live in France like all my life. And I live in the United States. I live between Palm Beach and New York for a few years. And I like Los Angeles and I live in Miami. And I like to travel. And the Tesserius, it means, you know, it's right like at some point you got to put some boundaries on the language because language got to be pure, the pure expression. Because humanity, at some point, they got to wake up and take care what they are talking about. Simple life, the beauty of the flowers, the beauties of dragonflies, the beauties of butterflies, and the beauties of, of course, the, the biological heart, the crystal heart. <laughs> so this represents a water lilies, but you know sometimes in like in my dreams 
I call it water chilies, water lilies, but it's inspired by water lilies. And um, this is this is also, um, you know, I ask uh, kindly uh, the beautiful own lady of the Amsterdam Whitney Gallery, Ruti Tiger, to choose to help me to choose the paintings which she would be happy to expose. Well, your work is wonderful, it's, it's colorful, it's, it's bright, it makes you happy, it makes me feel happy, and we welcome you to Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. We welcome you to Chelsea, New York. Thank you so much. Thank you. Once again, we're with Ruthie Tucker. And tell me, Ruthie, as one of the co-owners here at Amsterdam Whitney Gallery, who's next to you? Oh, our gallery assistant, our exhibition coordinator, Miss Victoria Burns, who is our angel in residence. And she is an angel. She is beautiful she and She keeps an it angel. going with, uh, with the, everything, the... with everything here. Wonderful. And we <laughs> Oh, I just love working here. It's a pleasure. Thank I'd you. like to introduce you to the art of Laurence Leur, an artist from France. And you can notice her beautiful geometric work uh, yet it's dazzling with a beautiful turquoise coloration and Laurence really is a master colorific artist and I thought that our international clients would so enjoy her um, soft hues that it's almost like a yin and a yang combined with a hard edge of geometry and it makes it a very exciting and, and a very vibrant art. So I hope you enjoy the work of Laurence Leur. Thank you. Here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery, the artist, here we go. Valeria. <laughs> Ronnie Lynn Doppelt. Nancy Murin. I'm Lulu Jung. Ruthie Tucker, the owner. Princess Tatiana Romanova, the artist. Karen Catania. Philip Catania. Kelly Stein. Tori Burns. Everybody here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery, say goodnight. Good night.